The film begins with a lively car ride of a young group of people in the fields. They merge onto the highway and encounter a military convoy. With enthusiastic shouts and greetings, the young people overtake the convoy, align with the lead car, and convince them to race. After leaving the military vehicles behind, the group accelerates while the convoy turns left onto another road. Approaching the checkpoint of an American military base, soldiers welcome the convoy and inform them that weapons testing is underway on the range, so entry is restricted, including for supply services. At this point, a colonel steps out of the last car and is also denied entry. He bends to tie his shoelaces, and the soldiers behind him open fire on the checkpoint. After raising the barrier and clearing the bodies, the military convoy continues forward. From the trunk of a military sedan, they pull out a white man, George McHale. Simultaneously, armed soldiers surround the car, first tossing out a hat from the trunk, then pulling out a second man, Indiana Jones. Rising to his feet, he retrieves the hat and dons it. Hearing Russian being spoken around him, he concludes that they are communists. Encircled by heavily armed soldiers, both prisoners debate their chances of escape. Just then, the colonel approaches the men. Gesturing behind Jones, he inquires about a nearby building. However, Jones brushes him off and is struck in the face. He rebuffs the colonel again, addressing him as comrade. Indiana's audacity deeply annoys the colonel, who instructs his soldiers to restrain him and prepares to strike. But a female voice intervenes. A woman emerges from the car and is told that both men were discovered in Mexico, digging in the mud and exploring debris. Approaching Indiana, she discerns that he is not a local and, from her accent, is from eastern Ukraine. Impressed by his keen observation, she introduces herself as Dr. Irina Spalko. She boasts of being awarded the Order of Lenin three times and the hero of Socialist Labor Star, all for her knack for finding what she seeks. Irina feigns an attempt to read Jones's mind, but he laughs in her face. Recognizing that she won't easily gain his cooperation, she declares she'll have to resort to more traditional methods to make him assist them. On her command, the soldiers fire at the control block of the massive gates, which swing open. Entering the building, they discover it's a massive warehouse. Arena informs them that this warehouse holds all the secrets hidden by the military, authorities, and archaeologists. However, Indiana denies any knowledge of this place. Despite this, Arena ignores his words and continues listing the characteristics of the mummified remains they are looking for, claiming he should know where to find them since he was part of the group that researched them. Indiana tries to convince Arena again that he knows nothing, but she places a blade to his throat, forcing him to help them. Moving deeper into the warehouse, Jones, under the watchful eyes of the soldiers, requests a compass or ammunition. Instead, he is met with mocking smiles. Approaching Dr. Spalko, he explains that the contents emit strong magnetic waves. She concurs, and gunpowder from a grenade is emptied into his hand. Climbing atop the nearest crates, he explains that if the magnetic field persists, the metal traces in the gunpowder will lead the way. With these words, he scatters the gunpowder. The scientist and the soldiers watch in astonishment as it travels in a specific direction and they begin to follow. Arriving at a particular spot, Jones again scatters the gunpowder, which disappears among the crates. The professor requests ammunition, climbs the crates, and empties a cartridge, causing small iron balls to roll beneath the crate. Dr. Spalko orders a search for the remains. After moving a few crates, she discovers a metal box with magnetized balls. Retrieving it, the soldiers begin to open it and place the iron container in the trunk of a military pickup. As they transport it, all nearby iron pieces magnetize to it. Jones and his friend remain under the soldiers' watchful guns. Arena leaps onto the pickup, opens the metal box, and finally sees what she has been searching for all along. At that moment, while everyone is engrossed in examining the find, Indiana instigates a scuffle, secures weapons for himself and his friend, aims at Arena, and forces everyone to drop their weapons. Reluctantly, the soldiers obey his command, but moments later, they raise their weapons again. Hearing a click from the side, Jones notices his friend aiming at him. Mac informs him that he was bribed, has significant gambling debts, and needs money. The colonel orders the professor to drop his weapon, he complies, causing the gun to discharge and injure a soldier's foot. Chaos erupts, the man bolts, bullets chasing after him. Meanwhile, the woman takes the wheel of the pickup and speeds away. Scaling the crates, Jones dashes across them, using a lasso as a rope in an attempt to reach the pickup but falls short and lands in the cab of a car trailing behind. He ejects two soldiers from the cab, then pursues the scientist. Catching up, he leaps into the trunk, moves to the cab, and pushes her out. As he continues to drive, Jones realizes he's being pursued from behind, with a car approaching from the front. At the last moment, he leaps from the car onto the ceiling beams, grabbing a lamp. The pursuit continues, the colonel fires his entire pistol at him but misses. Climbing down from the beams, Jones continues to flee, but the colonel catches up, and a brawl ensues. During the scuffle, Indiana shoves the colonel into the control panel, triggering a timer. The brawl ensues on and around a peculiar platform. As the timer nears zero, soldiers and Mac rush to intervene but are struck by rocket fire from the activated platform. 
However, Indiana's former ally manages to find cover just in time. The platform accelerates along its rails, carrying Jones and the Colonel with it. Meanwhile, the soldiers load the iron container into a vehicle. Arena and Mac climb in and speed away. The platform reaches the end of the rails and halts. Jones regains consciousness and confronts the Colonel. However, he loses his footing and falls. The impact jolts the soldier back to his senses, and his subordinates drive up in vehicles. Seizing the opportunity, the professor flees and hides in a ravine. After instructing the soldiers to find Indiana, the colonel departs. The following morning, Jones arrives in a small village, seeking assistance. Upon entering a house, he finds it empty, instead of people, it's filled with mannequins. Suddenly, an air raid siren wails along with the countdown from the timer. Just in time, he dashes into the house and hides in a lead-lined refrigerator as a powerful explosion erupts. The blast wave obliterates the mannequins in the house, hurling the refrigerator with the professor into a field. Climbing out, he realizes it was a nuclear explosion. Discovered at an American military base, Jones undergoes careful decontamination by individuals in specialized radiation suits. Later, the FBI commences an interrogation. Based on Mac's information, they suspect the professor of collaborating with the KGB. However, Jones vehemently denies any involvement. During the conversation, his friend, General Ross, arrives and vouches for Jones, revealing all he knows about Arena Spalco. The agents are displeased with the confidential information being disclosed to the professor and question his loyalty to the country. Indiana has resumed his teaching duties at the university. Midway through a lecture, the dean enters and informs him that the FBI had raided his office, leaving it in disarray. He grants Jones an indefinite leave with full pay and requests him to leave. The professor is deeply troubled and wonders why his friend, the dean, couldn't have done more. However, the dean explains that even this much cost him greatly, he had to resign. While packing his belongings, Jones confides in his friend about his plans to first visit New York City, then London, and possibly settle in Leipzig to continue teaching. With his suitcase ready, Indiana heads to the train station and boards a train. At one point, a man on a motorcycle appears, riding alongside the platform and peering into the train windows. Spotting the professor, he beckons him over, warning that his friend, Dr. Harold Ox, is in grave danger, someone wants him dead. Professor Jones meets with the motorcyclist at a cafe. During their conversation, the man introduces himself as Mutt Williams. His father died in the war, and archaeologist Ox helped raise him. He reveals that his mother received a letter from the doctor six months prior, stating that he had discovered a crystal skull and was heading to Akator. Professor Jones dismisses the crystal skull as merely an idol, a finely crafted artifact, and contends that Akator, also known as El Dorado, is a mythical lost city in the Amazon made of pure gold, complete with aqueducts and paved roads, which he believes doesn't actually exist. Mud is puzzled about why Harold would go there, and Jones shares the legend. The crystal skull was taken from Akator in the 15th or 16th century, and if returned to the city's temple, the one who returns it can harness its power. Mud explains that when his mother received the letter, she thought the archaeologist had gone mad and went to see him. But he was kidnapped, leaving instructions to find the skull, or they would kill them both. She urged her son to seek help from the professor, but he doesn't understand how he can assist, as he's just an archaeologist. Mud informs Jones that his mother managed to escape, handing over the letter from Ox. He shows the professor the letter with a cipher, and at that moment, Indiana notices two menacing men behind the bar, observing them. He assumes they are FBI agents, but when the two men approach the table, it becomes clear they are KGB agents, very interested in the letter. At gunpoint, Mutt and the man begin to move toward the exit, but Jones devises a plan. In a hushed tone, he instructs Mutt to strike the man standing nearby. A brawl erupts, creating chaos. Seizing the opportunity, Mutt and the professor make a dash for the motorcycle. A high-speed chase ensues, with several cars pursuing them. At one point, a pursuing car manages to catch up to the motorcycle, but Jones skillfully evades it. Turning into a narrow alley, they shake off their pursuers, only to encounter another car as they exit. The chase intensifies. The motorcycle enters a park bustling with a crowd and some sort of rally, but the pursuers remain relentless. Mutt decides to knock down a banner with a slogan, hoping it will fall on the car behind them. The banner obstructs the windshield, causing the car to crash into a monument without enough time to stop. However, the first car reappears, and the chase resumes. With no better options, Mutt steers the motorcycle into the university library. To avoid injuring anyone, he lays the motorcycle on its side, knocking over a few tables. Having evaded their pursuers, Jones and Mutt convene at his house, where the professor attempts to decipher the letter. He is captivated by the puzzle written in a dead language of South American Indians by Harold. Successfully decoding the text, Jones discovers the location of the skull, in the Nazca Desert in Peru. Mutt and Jones, along with the motorcycle, embark on a journey to Peru by small plane. Upon arrival, a local informs them that Ox was spotted there, not acting like himself, and was sent to a sanatorium. 
They make their way there, and as they hide behind the sanatorium gates, Mikhail approaches them. Inside the hospital, they are informed that the archaeologist is not present. Some individuals came and took him away, but they were granted access to his room where they saw drawings of elongated skull and the inscription return. Thoroughly examining the drawings, Jones spots some images on the floor, it's a map. Comparing it with the letter, he discerns their next destination, the tomb of Oriana. On their way to the specified location, they begin their search for the correct tomb. However, local residents attack them. After fending off the attackers, the men proceed and reach a dead end. Yet, the professor discovers a way to open a passage. Advancing further, they finally locate the tomb. At the entrance, Jones notices footprints and concludes that someone has already been there. Counting all the mummies, he excitedly announces that Oreana and his men had indeed managed to escape the jungles. Unwrapping one of the mummies, they find a perfectly preserved body, but upon exposure to air, the corpse disintegrates into dust. Approaching another mummy, they discover it has already been opened. Unfolding the cloth, Jones identifies it as Oreana himself. However, he is still puzzled as to who was there, why they left without taking anything, and why they didn't disturb anything. Scooping up a handful of coins, he approaches the mummy of Oreana, and the coins fly from his hand as if magnetically attracted to it. Pushing the body aside, he uncovers a crystal skull of elongated shape emitting a powerful magnetic field. Reflecting on the discovery, Indiana concludes that Ox was the first to find the skull, took it, but for some reason later returned it. Emerging on the surface, Jones and Mutt are confronted by Mikhail and Soviet soldiers. They are captured and transported to the Soviet camp at Ilya Armica. In the camp, the professor is bound to a chair, and Mikhail approaches him to talk. He confesses that he betrayed their friendship for a substantial sum of money, revealing that Akator is made of pure gold and could bestow immense wealth. However, Jones is incredulous. During their conversation, Arena joins them, unveiling the secret of the crystal skull. She describes it as a potent weapon capable of influencing the mind. The pieces start to fall into place for Jones regarding why Harold returned the skull to its location. Spalko asserts that this artifact is clearly not of human origin, but the professor remains skeptical. She then presents a specimen from New Mexico, an extraterrestrial being with an elongated crystal skull. Despite Irina's assertions about Akator's reality, Jones maintains that it is merely a myth and legend. She then brings in the archaeologist, believing he has been to Akator. However, no matter how Jones tries to communicate with him, Ox is unable to provide any information. His mind is severely damaged. Spalko elucidates how the skull functions. Gazing into its eyes for an extended period opens an extrasensory channel in the brain. She attempts to get Jones to make contact with the skull to use it to locate Akator, speculating that hundreds more such skulls could be in the lost city. With little choice, the professor complies with Arena, but he starts feeling unwell, and Mikhail insists on halting the experiment. At that moment, Ox momentarily regains his faculties. After untying Indy from the chair, the former friend is promptly punched in the nose, and the scientist vehemently refuses his help. Spalko then changes her approach. They bring the professor outside, with Mutt brought before him and a blade held at his throat. But this threat fails to coerce Jones into cooperating. Arena then orders another individual to be brought in, who turns out to be Mutt's mother, Marion Ravenwood. Seeing her, Jones is completely stunned, she was his former girlfriend. Forced to cooperate, the professor attempts to glean some information from the deranged archaeologist, but he's unsuccessful, Ox continues to merely quote Milton. Eventually, it clicks for Jones what Ox means, and he starts to decipher the secret to finding Akator. Meanwhile, Mutt instigates an impromptu fight, and he, Marion, Harold, and Indy attempt to escape. While running not far from the camp, the professor and his ex-girlfriend become ensnared in quicksand. The archaeologist and his son set off to find help. During their absence and as they sink deeper into the sand, Marion reveals to Jones that Mutt is his son. Just then, Mutt charges in, tosses his mother a rope, and pulls her out of the sand. Once Marion is freed, he throws the rope to the professor, but it turns out to be a snake, and he is terrified of them. After persuading Jones to grab the snake, they finally pull him out onto dry land. Immediately after, Ox appears with Mikhail and the soldiers. A military convoy travels along a road carved through the jungle. Jones, Mutt, and his mother are bound in one of the trucks. En route, Mutt learns that Indy is his father, leaving him in shock. The man confronts Marion, as she never forgave him for leaving her right before their wedding. Amidst the argument, the colonel grows weary of their squabbling and gags Marion. Seizing the opportunity while the soldier is preoccupied, father and son land several blows, knocking him unconscious. Extracting a concealed knife from his boot, Mutt passes it to his father, and they free themselves from their restraints. The professor climbs into the cab, ejects the driver, and takes the wheel. Taking control of the car, Marion drives while Jones grabs a long-range weapon and, with a precise shot, 
dislodges a buzz saw from a massive off-road vehicle. The saw blade hurtles at high speed, slicing through the pursuing vehicles. Seeing that the professor has managed to free himself, Arena hands over the skull and speeds away, triggering a chase. Indy jumps into the car carrying his former friend, the soldiers, and Harold with the skull. A brawl ensues, soldiers are ejected from the car due to the force of the punches. Mikhail receives several blows to the face for his treachery, and finally admits to Indy that he's a double agent. Meanwhile, Irina's car catches up, and the last soldier in the car tosses her the bag with the skull. However, Mud arrives just in time and wrests the bag from her grasp. A sword fight unfolds on the car rooftops. Mutt struggles, and his father comes to his aid by pushing their car into the adversaries. The combatants switch cars, with Mutt seizing the bag and Marion attempting to eject the scientist from her car. She partially succeeds, causing him to fall not onto the ground but into her own car, where Mutt and the skull are located. Another scuffle ensues. Mutt receives multiple blows, loses his balance, falls onto the car behind, and the skull ends up back with Arena. As they pass by vines, Mutt accidentally grabs onto them, hangs from them, and observes a myriad of monkeys. He watches them swing from vine to vine and mimics their actions. The chase continues along a cliffside. Arena takes the wheel, intending to shove Indy's car off the cliff. At a critical moment, Mutt intervenes, dropping onto Arena from above. Seizing the skull from her, he jumps back into his father's car. Gaining some distance from the woman, the professor spots an obstacle ahead and breaks sharply. However, Arena fails to stop in time and almost sails over their car. Breathing a sigh of relief, they realize Spalko has them in her pistol sights. But just then, she is bitten by a massive ant. They discover they've driven into an anthill. The group dashes toward the river to evade the ants, but they are intercepted by Irina's men. The colonel knocks Indy and Ox down, but Indy fights back. The others continue to run, dodging bullets. Another car catches up, but Marion is behind the wheel, and they leap into her car. While the professor grapples with the colonel, swarms of ants envelop the area. The archaeologist extracts the skull from the bag, and the insects encircle him. Arena escapes the ants using a vine, but they consume one of her soldiers alive. The circle of insects around the men tightens, but Jones manages to shove the soldier into them, and he is dragged into the anthill. Picking up Ox, the professor jumps into the car with the rest of the group, and they head straight towards the cliff. Ahead, Arena and the remaining soldiers prepare to repel down the cliff. Marion announces she has an idea, accelerates the car, and literally flies off the cliff. Instead of plummeting, they land on a tree. The tree aids in their gentle descent into the water below. Continuing their journey on the water, the current carries them towards a waterfall. Unable to halt, the car cascades over the first waterfall, then the second, and finally the third. With Harold's guidance, Indy realizes they are on the correct path to Akator. Emerging from the water, they see that the final waterfall is shaped like the head of an alien creature. Mutt suggests that to reach Akator, they must pass through the waterfall. The professor intends to go alone, but the others disagree. As they proceed together, the group finds themselves in a pyramid adorned with frescoes on the walls. After advancing a bit, they exit onto a street where local Indians pursue and assault them. However, they manage to repel them using the skull. Arena arrives at the waterfall and discovers a beacon on the ground. The group ascends the main pyramid, and Harold deciphers the riddle revealing the key to access the temple. The temple activates, and the entire group falls downward. Before they can recover, they notice the steps starting to retract into the wall and need to hurry down. Reaching the bottom of the pyramid, they finally discover the true treasures, monuments and relics of ancient civilizations, as well as golden gates. Using the skull to open these gates, they enter the golden hall and encounter golden thrones and crystal skeletons of alien creatures. Only one skeleton lacks a skull. Suddenly, a gun clicks from behind. Turning around, they see Mikhail aiming at them. He admits he was never a double agent and has been deceiving them all along. Arena appears at the door, following the beacon set by Mikhail. Taking the skull from Indy, she places the skull in its designated spot. Ox becomes frenzied and starts speaking in ancient Mayan. He hears the thoughts of the alien creatures. They express gratitude for the return of the skull. Upon hearing this, the scientist begins pleading for the secret knowledge. The hall starts to shift, everything around crumbles and spins, opening a portal to another dimension. The entire group manages to escape from the rotating hall, but Irina's soldiers are pulled into the portal. Emerging from the hall, the friends rush towards the exit, but Max Greed compels him to go back for the treasures. All the creatures extend their beams of knowledge towards Arena. At one point, she asks them to stop, but the creatures don't heed her plea. Indy attempts to help his former friend, but he gets sucked into the portal. Overwhelmed by the weight of the knowledge, Arena burns up and turns to dust, which is also sucked into the portal. 
the temple fully activates and starts to collapse, but the entire group manages to escape to the surface. At the summit of the pyramid, they witness a colossal flying saucer rising from the depths of the earth, obliterating the remnants of the ancient city. Suddenly, the saucer vanishes. All the elevated blocks and stones plummet back to the ground, and a massive vortex appears at the site of Akator, filling with water from the Amazon and erasing all traces of what transpired. The archaeologist fully regains his senses and learns that the professor is the father of the boy. The professor recuperates and returns to teaching at the university. Indy and Marion finally tie the knot. A sudden gust blows the hat off the coat rack. Mutt picks it up and is about to try it on, but Indiana deftly snatches it away, and they all exit the church. Hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. See you in the next videos.